For years, the WNBA has been vocal about the need for more pay. What is your message to the sporting industry about why women deserve to make just as much as men do? Just wake up. Wake up. <laughs> for years, the WNBA has been pleading for more financial rewards. But I do feel like the pay gap would be something that, you know, we could just take a donation around the NBA, maybe. Little did they know, however, that the solution they were looking for was right in front of them. But instead of addressing it, they turned a blind eye, denying the truth. I mean, everyone says the problem is the product. That's not the problem. There's great basketball being played. This denial you just heard in turn kept their salaries low and led some of their top athletes to seek better paying opportunities abroad. Tragically, because of this, one of them even faced a year-long imprisonment. WNBA star Brittany Griner is being detained in Moscow. Everything was starting to look quite bleak for the WNBA. Year after year since its inception, the league has been losing money, and now one of their top stars was being detained in Moscow. Despite all this, however, they continued to boldly ask for more financial support. <laughs> Recently, however, despite the WNBA's attacks on her, Caitlin Clark, a rising superstar from Iowa, has shown them a better way to secure higher pay, that they don't have to resort to what some might call begging for money. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how Caitlin Clark is saving the WNBA from their own stupidity. Off the break. Here's Clark. Still trying to find her rhythm. A deep pull. Got it! This graph illustrates the WNBA's viewership trends over the years. Initially, the numbers were promising, but as time passed, there was a noticeable decline in viewership. Despite this trend, players in the WNBA continue to be in denial about the reasons behind these changes. If we were out there playing bad basketball, like I would understand, but like that's that's not the case. So marketing, promotion, our equity and our uh, media deals, all that. As you've just heard, this WNBA player claimed that the league is a great product and that there is nothing wrong with the talent level. However, both the eye test and the statistics tell a very different story. I won't dwell too much on the lowlights, but consider this air ball taken by the so-called GOAT of the WNBA, which was supposed to be a game winner. <laughs> there are countless moments like this that demonstrate the shortcomings of the WNBA's product in the past, contributing to low viewership. However, I believe the statistics will paint this picture even more effectively. One widely used advanced metric in basketball, particularly in the NBA, is PER, which stands for Player Efficiency Rating. These metrics combine various aspects of a player's performance on the court, including points, rebounds, assists, efficiency, and more. While not flawless, the Player Efficiency Metric provides a comprehensive snapshot of an individual player's skill level. Then, by calculating the average PER of every player in the league, we can gauge the overall skill level of the whole league. Now, look at this graph here. This is the average player efficiency rating of the entire WNBA calculated per year, and as you can see, it's trending downwards. Another interesting observation is that the downward trend in performance aligns closely with the decline in attendance and viewership. Based on this hard evidence, we can conclude that instead of persistently complaining about pay, the WNBA should have concentrated on enhancing their skills and making the league more entertaining. Rather than allowing their egos to convince them that no changes were necessary, they should have embraced improvement and innovation. They got load of rims. I would watch a girl coming down the lane. <sighs> on another, I would watch that. They need to load They're the rims. One suggestion from NBA players to make the WNBA more exciting was to lower the rim from 10 feet to 9. However, every time this idea was proposed, the WNBA dismissed it. He doesn't dunk. He wants us to dunk. You dunk. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> When any business isn't profitable, it's important to experiment with different approaches. And the WNBA really needs to understand that this is entertainment, and if it's boring, it won't attract viewership. Heck, 
even the NBA had experimented with ways to make the game more entertaining. Between 1994 and 1997, in an effort to boost scoring, they shortened the three-point line to 22 feet from every spot on the court, making each shot the same distance as a corner three. When they realized this adjustment didn't improve scoring, however, they reverted to the original distance. So, I'm astonished that, despite losing money year after year, the WNBA hasn't even attempted a temporary change to see if it could inject more excitement into their game, but instead revert to dialogues like this. And I'm, I'm very annoyed with men continuing to create these spaces to discuss these things when they don't watch our games, they don't know us, they don't ask us our opinions about anything ever. Instead of engaging in endless discussions and continuing to lose money, they could have simply tested it out for a year or two. Anyway, the WNBA is incredibly fortunate to have a star from Iowa who finally cracked the code to boosting viewership. He's trying to redirect a pass, Clark, oh my, from Schenectady! For some concrete numbers, let's take a look at the statistics. Game 4 of the 2023 WNBA Finals between the Las Vegas Aces and the New York Liberty averaged just under 900,000 viewers, making it the most watched Game 4 in WNBA Finals history and marking a more than 100% increase from the previous year. Overall, the entire Finals averaged about 700,000 viewers, making it the most watched WNBA Finals in 20 years. This pretty much represents the pinnacle of WNBA viewership. Despite their talents and the quality of their product, this was the best they could achieve. Now, consider this. In the 2024 NCAA Women's Championship basketball game, Caitlin Clark attracted not just a million viewers, not even 5 million viewers, but nearly 19 million. That single game drew more views than likely the last five years of WNBA Finals combined. Now, let's look at the WNBA. As of today, here are the standings. Caitlin Clark's team, the Indiana Fever, isn't performing well, with seven wins and 12 losses, placing them second to last in their conference. However, thanks to the excitement Caitlin brings, they've achieved the highest attendance in WNBA history, averaging nearly 17,000 spectators per game. How is she accomplishing this? How did Caitlin Clark achieve what the WNBA has never been able to do? How did she drive up viewership to heights that even the so-called GOAT of the WNBA couldn't reach? Well, it's because she's not only immensely talented, but also incredibly exciting to watch. Much like Steph Curry, her shooting skills are extraordinary and captivate fans. Like, just look at some of these three-pointers. It's absolutely phenomenal. The extraordinary talent is what the WNBA has been missing. We, we are not asking to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking to get paid the same percentage of revenue, shared. Instead of being caught in their egos, believing they were already talented enough to deserve the same percentage of revenue as NBA players, despite their league losing millions each year, they just needed to make their league more exciting. <laughs> The irony behind all this is, why didn't they just learn this from the NBA? I mean, look at this publicly available information regarding the average valuation of NBA teams. In 2015, when Steph Curry officially burst onto the scene as an MVP, and when the world started taking notice of his ability to hit three-pointers off the dribble and from incredible distances, the league became more exciting. And as a result, the average valuation of teams nearly doubled. And today, it's more than quadrupled. Anyway, this is what Caitlin Clark has brought to the WNBA, hope that their struggling league could be saved from imminent bankruptcy. But how are they nurturing this newfound talent? Firstly, their supposed GOAT, Diana Taurasi, has been downplaying Caitlin's achievements in an unprecedented manner. I'm taking Paige. Next question. So you get the number one pick this year, you would take Paige over Caitlin? Absolutely. There's this levels day. to this thing, and that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side, it, and you're going to see it on this side, where you know they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Next off, on the court, the WNBA is allowing their players to physically target her. 
They may claim that these are just basketball plays, but honestly, these are the kinds of actions that would get Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors suspended indefinitely. <laughs> The frequency with which she's being hit, the mocking directed at her, and the animosity she's facing suggests that these are anything but regular basketball plays. So you want to hurt me while I'm trying to play regular defense. I'm trying to stop y'all. I'm trying to beat you. Yeah, you can't stop. You're trying to hurt me. That's the difference. Yet, the crazy thing about all this is, the WNBA isn't taking any action. No suspensions. No media statements condemning this behavior. Nothing. This is incredibly short-sighted because if she gets injured and is sidelined for the season, or worse, the WNBA will revert to its former state, a struggling league desperately begging for financial support. The WNBA needs to understand that it operates in the realm of both business and entertainment. While the current players are undoubtedly talented, many of the baskets they score lack excitement. For example, their post moves leading to buckets might be efficient and help win games, but they don't captivate the audience. Here's a prime example. Diana Taurasi is often hailed as the GOAT of women's basketball, but if you search for the top 10 highlights of her career and watch her so-called greatest moment, you'll see a good shot, no doubt. A difficult shot, certainly. But it lacks the excitement of something like a deep game-winning buzzer beater by Caitlin Clark when her team was down by two. Here's Clark, she fires, and it goes! She hit it! When WNBA players argue that there's already enough talent in the league for it to be profitable, they need to remember one crucial point. Even the best WNBA team would be utterly outmatched by the worst NBA team. In fact, some YouTubers have simulated scenarios where Steph Curry or LeBron James alone could defeat an entire WNBA team. <laughs> I realize it's just a video game, but the point remains. If people purely wanted to watch basketball based on talent alone, the worst NBA team would offer a more compelling show than the best WNBA team. So what the Women's Basketball League fails to grasp is that excitement is what draws fans in. Caitlin Clark is bringing that excitement, and perhaps a lower rim could too. Yet they are downplaying Clark's contributions and outright rejecting the idea of a lower rim. These are some of the most short-sighted business strategies imaginable. A fitting analogy can be drawn from the UFC. Colby Covington, arguably the most polarizing figure in the sport, has an intriguing story. Early in his career, Covington was a great fighter with an impressive record. However, most of his victories came by decision after wrestling matches on the ground, which fans found unentertaining. Despite his skills and success, he was deemed boring and, as a result, Dana White was on the verge of cutting him from the UFC. Upon realizing this, Colby changed his strategy and transformed himself into the biggest villain the UFC has ever seen. As a result, people tuned in just to see him lose. But it got him views and made him a lot of money. Similarly, the WNBA, though skilled, has long been perceived as boring, which is why the revenue hasn't followed. Caitlin Clark has finally revealed the winning formula. Yet, they are failing to fully capitalize on this opportunity. Perhaps the reason is that they know, win or lose, the NBA will always continue to subsidize them. This reliance, though, doesn't build good business skills. Nonetheless, the WNBA is at a crucial point in history. Whether it soars or sinks in the coming years, I'm eager to see how it unfolds. But anyway, did you know that 18 former NBA players are headed to prison for one of the most absurd scams I've ever heard of? Yes, even Glenn Big Baby Davis, a champion from the 08 Celtics team with Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and Kevin Garnett, is going to jail. If you want to learn more about this scam and just how ridiculous it was, click on this video here where I've got the whole story for you.